Greetings class users. In this video, I'm going to show you how I designed, fired, and put together this beluga wind chime. And then I broke it and then I fixed it. Here are your supplies. So when I started designing this project, I actually started with my piece of wood that I plan to hang my wind chime from. This is a really nice piece of driftwood that I've had stashed away for quite a while. And I chose to create my design that would complement the piece of wood. So the way I did this was I just placed the piece of wood on top of some butcher paper and I started sketching. I decided I wanted to use a whale since it's some driftwood and you know has to do with the ocean and water and everything. So I thought I would make a fun little beluga whale and I drew this freehand but I used a bunch of reference material so it's always a really good idea that if you're trying to create a likeness, something that looks like something, you know, an animal, a person, a thing, uh, that you use images that are already out there. So looking up either drawings or silhouettes of animals. I know I looked up stencils of belugas and search around on the internet for something that at least kind of looks like what you're going for. And that way you could always print those out and use them as a jumping off point for your sketch. And then you can edit and change things as you see fit to customize your design. I always recommend sketching out your designs for projects ahead of making them, especially if it's something you've never made before. And this will help you visualize your finished product and plan out your firings. So I also sketched out some other little water components. They're little water whorls that are gonna accompany my beautiful beluga. And once I've figured out all the components that I need to make, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to cut them out of glass next. So I didn't want to try and cut my beluga all in one go. It's got a lot of little curves in different places and making it out of different pieces will add dimension to it. So I, I sketched out my beluga into four different components. You can do this by tracing your original sketch onto another piece of paper and then cutting out the different pieces. I then traced those pieces onto my glass uh, in a manner that I knew I could cut out easily and uh, wouldn't have any crazy curves to deal with. So the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is separate these pieces. I've drawn, I've drawn them onto the same piece of glass. And remember, our glass only likes to be broken in easy curves. So first I'm going to separate the main body of the beluga from the smaller components and that'll make it easier to isolate and cut out the smaller pieces with their teeny tiny curves. Here's an example of how I cut out the fins. Notice how I initially cut out kind of a chunkier block around the design and then I was able to follow these curves and uh, break out the fin a little bit more easily. And you see the dotted line there is my extra cut that I made before going in for the deeper curve because those curves are kind of are quite tight and if you're nervous about uh, breaking out those curves and don't feel very confident when using the grosers then you can just cut the easy curve and then use the grinder to get rid of the rest of that little curve on the inside of the fin. Another option is to try and use the saw to get some of these tighter curves, especially with that tail fin, that can be useful. Remember to always take care when scoring and breaking your pieces. You want to work on a clean surface that doesn't have a bunch of frit debris. If you've got a bunch of little pieces of frit underneath your glass while you're cutting, it can actually cause little fractures where you don't want it. And I think that's what happened to my little tail here. I accidentally cut it on top of a 
messy table and so I lost a little bit of the tail here but it's in decent shape I am still able to use it and my design will still be successful and this is how those components are going to look assembled together make sure to consider where your pieces are going to attach to each other where they need to overlap uh, to make sure your piece will be whole once it's fired for the face of my little beluga I used some glass glaze glass paint which it does not go glossy when you fire it but since I am going to a lacy contour I knew that my other glass line wouldn't go glossy either so I decided to use the glaze and I painted the smile and eyebrow on both sides making sure that one side was dry before doing the second side and for my fins I'm gonna be firing one on the bottom side of the beluga body and one on the top of the beluga body so I cut out some fiber felt that I could place underneath the topmost fin to keep it raised after, while once it's fired this is just an added uh, aspect to create more dimension and make the fins look like they're more separated apart it's a small detail that you don't necessarily have to have but I decided to try it out because I wanted to see how it would look for my little water whorls I traced them onto my blue glass that I wanted to use and I used the same three patterns multiple times over and I tried to trace them close together to each other so I can conserve as much glass as possible while making sure not to create uh, too difficult to cut or an angle that I won't be able to break out easily. So you're gonna glue all these pieces to your kiln paper and put them in for a lacy contour. After the lacy contour on the water whorls, I used some glue to add some white frit. The glue is on the surface of the glass and not in between any thick layers so I'm not as worried about it making any marks or awkward bubbles since I'm just placing frit on top. So I made a little swirl design in glue and then I sprinkled a bunch of white frit that I had made using the frit piston, cleaned it up a little bit with a brush and then also added some dichroic, clear dichroic frit that I had made. And this will go in for a tack fuse. That way all the frit will keep its nice texture and dimension and be a nice contrast to the very smooth blue glass that's underneath it. Once all your pieces are finished fusing, then you can start drilling your holes. Uh, you want to be thoughtful with where you drill the holes because depending on how the glass is balanced It's going to hang a certain way depending on where you have that hole So for the whale I knew I would need two holes one closer to the head and one closer to the tail to make it balanced and look like it's swimming through the water and for the little water whorls, uh, the way I determined how I wanted them to hang is I just kind of held them and wherever I pinched, I tried to make just like one small pinch and see where the weight of the glass was pulling it. And once I was happy with the position, it was in whenever I was holding it just by pinching. That's how, that's where I decided my hole would go. Going back to my design, I decided I needed more of my little water whorls to fill out uh, the space between the whale and the driftwood, and so it makes it look like there's a lot more water around my beluga. So I made a couple more of the water whorls, and then I spread them out and started deciding which ones would be hanging and attached to other ones. So water whorl won't be hanging from its own individual strand that's connected to the driftwood. Some of them there are two or three water whorls connected to each other that are then connected to the driftwood. So for those pieces that are connected to more than one you'll need to drill a hole in both the top and bottom part of your glass. 
to make sure you're considering which pieces are going to be bumping into which and if you've got pieces of glass that aren't going to be touching any of the other pieces of glass then they're not going to be making noise uh, when you have your wind chime up so you want to make sure that you are putting pieces on the same plane as others so that they'll bump into each other and make your wind chime sounds. Alright, so to set up the drill press, it's usually already plugged in, but we've got a plug right next to it, which you can plug in, and then I'll bring out some different pieces of wood, and we've got a tray, depending on the size of your piece, we may or may not be able to fit it in the tray, if you can, awesome, because then it'll catch the water, if not, we'll just have to set up some towels. So, before I put this before I put on my drill bit, I'm just going to place this under here just so I don't have a hard time bringing this under in case my drill bit is sitting a bit lower. But to put the drill bit in, you've got a little chuck, looks like this, and then your diamond head drill bit. Alright, and that will go in, there's little pinchers extending down here, and you can tighten to a degree just using the bit itself, but then it gets to a point where you need to use the little chuck, so you just place it in the little hole there where there's little teeth, and then just turn it until you can't turn it anymore. And it should be pretty firm. Make sure that your drill bit is gonna go reach all the way through your piece and even beyond it because if it, does, if it just makes it to here and it's not gonna reach through, then there's no point. Just like with everything, we want uh, constant water. So if it fits in the tray, that's awesome. You can fill up the tray and just have a level of water there. I'm just gonna show you guys how you can also use, if it's something that's kind of sticking out, we've got a two liter bottle here which has a very small hole poked in it and it's filled up with water and when the top is closed the water stays in the bottle but then as soon as I unscrew this the water is going to start kind of peeing out here and landing on my glass piece uh, as I drill because we don't want all that glass dust to go up in the air and us to breathe that. You can use a chair if you're going to be sitting here for a while. I'm just going to open up I've got a little bit of water going. And then there's an on switch right here. It's just a little black button. Before I start, I want to make sure I've got my drill bit that's going to make contact right where I want it on my glass piece. That's where my mark was. I'm just going to move a little bit. You don't want to go all the way close to the edge because you're more likely to bust open your glass there. So you just want to come at least a quarter of an inch in from whatever edge you're drilling at. I did have to pause and readjust my uh, drill bit. It wasn't going all the way through and what had happened was I hadn't tightened it completely and so I needed to loosen and extend the drill bit out further. Um, to make sure that it would actually go through my glass. So if you find that you're, if you're drilling and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere, stop, check your bit, make sure that it's secure and not uh, loose in the drill. And if it's still not going anywhere, uh, change your bit, get a new one. It might, these drill bits do go bad and do need replacing ever so often. And then you'll hear a little tap, but sounds like a choop, once it's through, and then you can see that it's done. Do the other one at a different angle.
that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. In the next one, I'll show you guys how I, well, first of all, broke this and then fixed it and then, of course, assembled it all together. Have a good one. See you in the studio.